नमस्ते एवरी वन वेलकम टू मई क्लास ऐम विनोद वी आर इन नईन्थ स्टाडर्ड कैमिस्ट्री चाप्टर थ्री आटम्स एंड मालिक्यूल इन यार प्रीवियस लेसन दट इज चाप्टर वन एंड चाप्टर टू यू हेव लर्न अबउट मैटर द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मैटर सॉलिड लिक्विड एंड गैस एंड इन द सेम लेसन यू हेव लर्न अबउट द पार्टिकुलेट नेचर ऑफ मैटर दट इज मैटर इज मेड अप ऑफ पार्टिकल इन द सेकेंड चाप्टर यू हेव लर्न अबउट द matter classification of the matter like pure substances and impure substances where you come across mixtures and pure substances you come across elements and compounds so this lesson a little bit deeper into the structure of matter so the wise men like as matter was known the five tatvas the panch tatva which made up the matter uh the five constituents which are present in the matter like we have the indian philosophers and the greek philosophers they came to the conclusion at the beginning that matter is made up of uh, air water earth sky and fire so after that in uh, after having some knowledge about different kinds of matter the great works done by the indian philosophers and the greek philosophers to find out the internal structure of the matter so how the matter is made up of so it was the indian philosophers pakuda maharshi kanad and pakuda katyayama and the greek philosophers almost at the same time democritus and lucipus so they have given us very good idea though it is not a scientific outlook so these are philosophers these people are philosophers which are wise men they have good knowledge about the society as well as great scientific outlook so maharshi kanada said when uh, when you take any matter so when you keep on dividing the matter dividing or breaking the matter into pieces so into half half into half and half into half ultimately you will come across the smallest piece so that smallest piece which you can't break any further is called parmanu or in other way we can say parmanu any matter is made up of the smallest indivisible particle called parmanu so this is said by maharshi kanad the same thing at the same time democritus and lucipus the greek philosophers also said every matter is made up of the smallest particle that is what indivisible and the name indivisible is in greek we call it as atom atom was the name given by democritus for the first time atom means indivisible or uncuttable then almost the same time in a in 500 bc only so at the time after maharshi kanad maharshi pakuda katyayama so he is one of the great philosopher he said uh, all these particles or parmanus generally do not exist in free state but they combine they combine they exist in combined state so their combinations with different types of parmanus result in different types of matter which we see so this combination is very important like these parmanus combine to produce large number of things around us so we call them as molecules the combination nowadays or we call the combination of this i mean they they are molecules and ultimately these will form compounds molecules and compounds the combinations results in so the molecules are like you can take it as molecules which make up an element or the molecules which bring about combin uh, a compound so that is what is the great things told by the philosophers from 500 bc till 18th century so there was not much progress done on these atoms so in 18th century that is 1700s uh, two important i mean two great scientists have given or formulated two important laws of this chemical combination that is combinations of atoms to give molecules so we will learn about the two important laws of chemical combination so laws of chemical combination the first and important law is law of conservation of mass which is given by antony lavoisier so antony lavoisier is very great scientist he is also known as father of chemistry so what is this law whenever we say conservation the first thing come to our mind is 
can be neither created nor destroyed so mass can be neither created nor destroyed since it is, it is conservation of mass so mass can neither be created mass can neither be created nor destroyed so when during a chemical reaction so when a chemical reaction takes place the combination of atoms or the rearrangement of atoms result in a new compound where the mass of these compounds which are there in the reactants will not be destroyed but it will be equal to the total mass of the product so you can write rewrite the statement of law of conservation of mass as in a chemical reaction the total mass of the reactants is equal to total mass of the products so this this means that nowhere we are going to lose the mass so i'll give you an example if you are heating 100 grams of calcium carbonate so you are going to get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas if we take the mass of the products so the mass of the calcium oxide will be 56 grams and mass of carbon dioxide gas that is evolved will be 44 grams so once again the total mass of the products will be equal to 100 grams which is the actual mass of the reactant calcium carbonate so this is one example where this is an example of a chemical reaction where mass is conserved almost all any chemical reaction mass remains conserved so the second law is law of constant proportions or you can say it as law of definite proportions also so it was given by joseph proust so this law states in any chemical compound the same elements combine together in the same fixed proportion by mass so i'll take an element water h2o water is a combination of two elements so hydrogen and oxygen so wherever the so whatever the source may be the water can be obtained from like the rain water the sea water the ground water or the river water so the combination of the elements in water is h2o if i take the ratio of these elements in terms of mass so hydrogen atomic mass is 1u so two atoms are there it is 2u so right now i'm not going to put the units number i'll put 2u then oxygen atomic mass is 16u so since it is a ratio i can divide by 2 and write 1 is to 8 so the ratio of the combination of hydrogen and oxygen in water molecule by mass is 1 is to 8 the meaning of this i'll say if we take 9 grams of water if we take 9 grams of water in those 9 grams out of those 9 grams this hydrogen will weigh 1 gram the weight of our hydrogen will be 1 gram and we'll have this oxygen which will weigh 8 grams so that is how we will find i mean out of 9 grams of h2o 1 is to 8 when we look at this ratio of combination of hydrogen and oxygen so there you are going to have one gram of hydrogen and eight grams of oxygen in water molecule in a similar way we can also get carbon dioxide in different ways like while burning coke the pure form of carbon you will have carbon coke burns in oxygen to get to give us carbon dioxide a second form you can heat calcium carbonate again on heating calcium carbonate you will get calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide again uh, one more method when is metal carbonate i'll write uh, an acid plus metal carbonate uh, metal bicarbonate i'll write so that it is easy for us to uh, write the equation na sorry nahco3 metal bicarbonate so when these react we are going to get salt plus water plus carbon dioxide so nacl plus h2o plus co2 so I have produced carbon dioxide gas in different ways from these chemical reactions so though the sources are different the combination of the two elements carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide is fixed 
and is in the same ratio by mass so when we take the ratio of carbon and oxygen by mass in carbon dioxide i'll write c o2 so carbon uh, mass atomic mass is 12 u and then oxygen two atoms are there so two atoms 16 to the 32 so 32 u so when we take the ratio of this it will be four i mean divide with four three fours are 12 3 is to 8 for the 32 so the carbon and oxygen present in carbon dioxide are in the ratio of 3 is to 8 by mass so on adding these two i'll get 11 so if we take 11 grams of carbon dioxide gas in that 3 3 grams of carbon will be present and 8 grams of oxygen is present in carbon dioxide of 11 grams so this is how we are going to find out using this law of constant proportions we will find the percentage of an element in a given compound how much percent an element is present in a given compound so let me give you a small formula for finding the percentage of an element in a given compound so percentage of an element in a given compound so you can take it by mass percentage so mass of that element in that compound mass of the element in that compound by mass of that compound into 100 so you can get how much percentage of a particular element is present in the particular compound by mass this is about the loss of combination we will meet again with the dalton's atomic theory and Dalton's postulates. Thank you very much everyone.